Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Motivation Monday, and I know you're saying, what is she talking about today? What's going on? Well, family, I am definitely up and ready to chat with you this morning. So let's see what this thing is going to look like, sound like, and feel like on this morning, because I am ready. Good morning, Lynn. Good, ready, get, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm like, get ready, get ready. I'm, I'm excited already. Good morning, Christina. Hey, Tiffany. Thank you guys for tuning in. Do me a favor as you come on, go ahead and like and share for us. Like and share, like and share, like and share. We want to make sure that we never are um, keeping all this information to ourselves. I got hair going everywhere this morning. So good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hey, mom. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I got myself almost adjusted here. I feel like I'm too short this morning. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. I know you're probably saying, well, you're always short, Dr. K. I am. Good morning, y'all. I am ready to rock. It is Monday. I am feeling good. Been up for a while, but I'm excited about being up because that means, guess what? He chose me. He woke me up. Good morning, Melinda. Good morning, D. Hey, Tiff. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you guys are having a great day already. Good morning, Michelle. Be careful out there if you're in the Atlanta area. I know it was a little, it was wet this morning. So good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you guys. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So on Friday, I was walking. And as I, you know, I walk, I am um, always fellowshipping me and God. We have a whole good time. I'm walking through my neighborhood, my community. I know my neighbors probably sometimes look out and say, why is this girl walking with her hands up? What is she doing? Like, is everything okay? Good morning. Good morning, everybody. And I am fine. I'm just, that's when me and God do a lot of talking. You know, we do a lot of talking early in the morning and uh, most times I'm doing more listening than I am talking. You know, my talking is minimal because he got that on control. <laughs> good morning, Nora. Good morning. Good morning. But family, I just want to ask you a question because you saw our title this morning and um, the title is I'm talking to you. So not me. I'm talking to you. He is talking to you. So let's clarify that. Have you ever been in a situation where you're sleeping and you're like, man, Every night I seem to wake up about the same time. It's like a window of time. Or sometimes I know for me, sometimes it would be like I was up at two o'clock, four o'clock, or I was up at 12 o'clock, two o'clock, four o'clock, or it was three o'clock, five o'clock, you know, one of those situations. And it's like, dang, am I able to sleep? What's going on? Why, why do I keep getting up? And you're like, what's going on? Well, Early in my walk, I did not understand, like, Lord, you know, everything is okay. I don't understand. There's nothing on my mind. I prayed. I went to bed. So why can't I sleep in peace? What's bothering me? And, you know, I would get up. I would go to the bathroom. I would go downstairs, you know, get me something to drink. And in some cases, if it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to just be honest, I probably might grab a snack. That's why we got rid of the snacks in the house because that doesn't help us in the middle of the night. But let's get back on topic. So... What I learned was in during that time of mourning, that was when God was like, hey, get up. I need your attention. I'm talking to you. I need to talk. It's time for me, you, without any distractions. Good morning, Rutho. Without any, anything else, I need your undivided attention. Anybody but me have that situation where God is like, listen. You're like, man, I got to go to work in the morning. I, I need to sleep. I want to get some rest. And he's like, no, you can try to go back to sleep, but I'm going to wake you back up within the next hour. And sometimes it would be like on 15 minute intervals. I'm drifting and I'm like, Lord, I'm trying to sleep. Well, what's going on? Why can't I sleep? And he's like, because I need to talk to you. And this is the best time when it's quiet, when it's still, when I can have your undivided attention. And like I said early on, I didn't get it, but it made me um, start to go back and think about Eli. And of course, we knew Eli, Eli's mom was Hannah, and um, she was um, Elkanah's first wife, and she couldn't have any children, and how his second wives were producing heirs, and she just didn't like it, and she just kept every year, they would make that pilgrimage, and they would be praying that, you know, she would be able to um, have a child, and she made an agreement with God, you know, if you let me have this baby, I will give him to you. And that is just what happened, and that's where Eli was birthed and born, so I'm giving you the modified version. So with that, um, with that being said, I was like, you know, we know the story when he went to, um, he went to, I'm sorry, not Eli, Lord have mercy, 
Samuel. He went to, you know, go and work under the auspices of Eli, you know, and it was like, okay, you know, I'm here. And Eli was the prophet, of course, but his house wasn't in order. So God was not going to, um, he was going to cut some things off. So he's looking for his next prophet. And it's like, okay, well, what, what are we going to do? You know, how is this thing going to work? And he said, okay, you know what? I got this man who has a pure heart. And at the time he was a boy. So with that being said, you know, Samuel is there. He's under Eli's tutelage. He's like, okay, sleeping. And he hears this voice. And so he goes and asks, master, did you call me? Like, you need something? And Eli like, nah, bro, I'm asleep. Go lay down. So he um, went and laid down and it was like, again, he heard this voice. He went back to Eli like, hey, did you call me? You need something? He's like, bro, I told you I'm asleep. Everything is cool. Go lay down. So this third time when he got up, you know, Eli was like, now, no, 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 that's not me. That's God. You need to ask God, what is it that he is trying to say? And, you know, it took me, good morning, Pastor Jerry. It took me so long to understand that. And I, I used to be like, dog, my sleep is uh, messed up. You know, I'm, I'm trying to take melatonin. I'm trying to take z I'm trying to take all of these things. And God is like, I don't care what you take. This is the time that I need for me and you to have some conversation because I got some stuff that I need to share with you. And I don't want it to be any distractions. I don't want it to be any misunderstanding or any miscommunication. So, you know, when you have that or you have those things sometimes that it just it won't leave your mind. It's just stuck right there. And you're like, man, where is this thing coming from? Well, we got to be able to listen. We got to be able to. He needs our undivided attention. So he is talking to us not anybody else you know how we'll say oh I had a dream last night that this is this and this and it's like no God is over here like hey that was me it wasn't a dream it was something I was trying to tell you some of us are blessed with a gift to actually hear him and hear him clearly even though he talks to all of us some of us are saying well I don't understand why oh you better say it Avril it is not sleep time it's listening time that's right um, he's saying, this gift is for all. I want to communicate with you. I'm your daddy. I'm, I'm a father. So yes, you got a direct line of communication. The issue isn't that God isn't talking to you. The issue is that we have to learn how to listen and not just listen. We got to learn to act and be obedient. So when we're blessed with that gift to be able to hear him and understand very clearly, that is, you know what? That's him talking to us. When we have an opportunity, when he's like, hey, I'm going to put you in this position to do this this thing but you got to be obedient and do what I asked you to do so again that's him talking to us it's not that we got the job because it was on us it's not that we got the that we got pregnant because it was us it's not that we got the finances in order because it was just all that we did it's him talking to us to say hey I'm going to help you get your finances in order because I'm going to need you to bless my people. I'm going to need you to take the resources that I give you and you're going to have to do a thing. I'm going to show you what needs to happen. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to share some things with you, but it's not just for you to keep to yourself. So this is where the acting part comes. It might sound sometimes real crazy, but you're going to have to get your butt up and you're going to have to move when I tell you to move. And I can give you a good example. I remember I was talking to my sister Bernadette and, you know, God had, had said something to her. He had, you know, she has that gift. And he was like, listen, I need you to go over there and tell that lady X, Y, Z. Now, Vern is in the airport. She don't know the lady. She like, huh? Okay. So she has, she sees the lady. She has to almost catch up with her to give the information, but she has to be obedient. It's happened to me before where I've had to call somebody and I probably would have wished it was somebody that I didn't know rather than somebody that I did, because they was like, what you talking about? And I'm like, hey, this is what God told me to tell you. So when you have, when you are blessed with that gift, when he's talking to you and he downloads and say, you got to go do something, or he's blessed, he's giving you finances, he's giving provision, and he's doing these things. It's not just for you. You got to be able to move. When we have a dream, that is God talking to us. When we have a vision, that is him talking to us. When we have challenges, that is him talking to us. Now the question becomes, hey, how are you going to respond when he starts to talk to us? How are we going to listen? Are we going to listen obediently so that we can hear him and the the beautiful thing is when we do when we listen and obe when we obediently listen to him we are able to bear fruit 
productive fruit, bountiful fruit. And we're able not just to help our own household, but somebody else's household as, as well. So in Samuel, in 1 Samuel, Samuel was able to grow in the Lord and with him because guess what? He had a pure heart. He was able to do what he needed to do. But Remember, he did at first need Eli to guide him. Now, some of us are in positions and situations where it's like this thing is fresh to us, is new. Just make sure you are seeking and you are getting good counsel, that you're not just out there listening to anybody. And you know, when I, I was looking, 1 Samuel 3.19 says, and Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and did let none of his words fall to the ground. So understand, Anything that God says is going to come to pass. It's going to bear good fruit. It's not going to falter. It might not happen when we want it. It might not happen right away because you get super excited, but it is going to, it's going to happen. And because Samuel is so obedient, he was able to become a channel of God's communication and blessings to others. You know, and so many of us, we want the blessings, but we want to hold it to ourselves. See, that's why God is searching that heart to make sure when I give you this thing, it's not for you to hoard it. When I give you this thing, it's for you to be able to freely give to others. It's for you to be able to bless other people in the process, not just hold on to it, you know, the way that you want to hold on to it. But understand, with us being able to listen obediently, being able to hear him clearly, there is some other action that's going to have to take place. We're also going to develop and get to a point where we can respond to God. And the more we respond, the more he will continue to reveal himself. Now, in the revelation, that's when that thing starts to look real different, because we have to make sure that we are walking obediently, not when we feel like it, but when he says, hey, this is what I want you to do. So this morning, and as I was sleeping, I woke up a few times, I might have gotten up about, mm, it must have been about three o'clock. And I was like, okay, let me get up, go to the restroom, come back. And then it was like four, four o'clock. Then I'm like, gosh, what's going on? And instantly I'm like, oh, I, I got to pray. And so I, I prayed right where I was. And, and then God was like, mm -mm, not where you at. You got to get up. You got to go to that closet because I, I need you because I don't need you drifting back to sleep. I don't need anything that's going to be a distraction. I need your full and undivided attention. And see, in this point in my life, I have visions, more visions than dreams, but sometimes I have dreams and it was, it was so clear. And I'm like, okay, God, let me get up. And in that moment, in my obedience to get up and do what he asked me to do, that was my time to spend with him so that he can show me which direction I needed to go. And sometimes family, I won't lie. It's tough because you want to sleep, you want to rest, you want to do what you want to do. But when he is talking to you, when you're in relationship with him, you know, when he's talking to you, you know when you have to move and I'm not saying it's going to be easy I'm not saying that at all I am saying that it's going to be tough yes I see Bernadette I see you in the chat right there Bernadette says numbers 12 and 6 say hear now my words if there is a prophet among you hallelujah I the Lord make myself known to him in a vision I speak to him in a dream family is so real I can't begin to tell you but when I'm and when I'm expected to call you and any one of you, so know that you're not like this girl crazy. No, because I understand the mantle that has been given to me. I understand what needs to happen. And sometimes it's it's a heaviness about it. That's why we got to make sure we got the right people around us. We have to make sure that we are covering our homes. We have to make sure we're covering our family members. Good morning, everybody. We have to make sure that we're being obedient, that who we're seeking counsel from, those individuals are godly and they're giving us the right counsel. We have to make sure that we're not we're not walking with blinders on and because God doesn't fit in a box. He's not going to come talk to you at two o'clock on a Monday afternoon when you have time in your schedule. No, you're going to have to stop what you're doing and he's going to disrupt some things. I remember my husband was like, God, I can't sleep. I think it's the bed. No, baby, it ain't the bed. That's God. Same thing. My son was like, well, I don't understand. I, you know, I'm tired. I, I don't sleep well at night. And I'm like, okay, you need to take some melatonin, but also you need to go ahead and get on your knees because it's not about a video game, sir. It's about you being able to have some conversation because what God has for you is so great and so big. You're going to touch people that, you know, 
I might not be able to touch your auntie, your grandmother, your dad might not be able to touch, but you'll be able to touch them because he has a big, a big work for you. And he needs your attention to know that he has your attention. And family, sometimes we got to speak that thing. Good morning. Good morning. We have to speak that thing over our children, over our family. And that godly counsel, Avril, I cannot tell you how imperative it is. You know, people sometimes look and you'll see people try to gravitate to you and be around, but everybody is not for this journey. You might need to bless somebody. You might need to help somebody. But when it comes about seeking counsel, I remember I was listening to a message from Bishop Jakes and he talked about the different kind of people that are around, the confidants, you know, the comrades. And I can't think of that other one, but I know it'll come to me. But, you know, talking about it, everybody has a position that they're going to play. You know, some people are in this thing just because, hey, I'm connected to what you're connected to, so it's okay. But the minute you change from this, I'm going to something else. See, when we talk about that godly counsel, we need those individuals that are rooted, baby, that know how to go before him, that will intercede, that will stand in the gap, that are pitching their tents around you and your home, even when you don't know it. You have to seek that counsel that is not self-seeking, where they're telling you what they want you to do or what they need you to do for them. They're going to tell you what thus saith the Lord, that they're going to give you that word. They're going to go ahead and reflect back on the word it's not just going to come from what they have experienced because everybody's situation is different so we got to make sure that we're following so i started all of that saying we got to make sure when he's calling us when he's talking to us we stop what we are doing we get up i don't care if you sleep i don't care if you have to be at work in an hour it doesn't matter when god is saying hey I need you when he's waking you up, when you're getting up two, three, four times in the morning, don't call your girlfriend and say, girl, I know something must be wrong because it ain't right in my spirit. I couldn't even sleep last night. So something, and, uh -uh, don't call her and tell her that. What you need to say is, Lord, I'm so sorry I wasn't obedient. I'm sorry I didn't get up from my place of comfort, that bed, and go get in a place where I could hear you where I could be with you. That's the call you got to make. But more importantly, you got to get up and you got to go into that quiet place and space. And yes, that means sometimes you're going to lose. A, there's so much sleep that I lost, but what I've gained from him, I can't even compare it to sleep. What I've gained in my intimate relationship from him, what I gained in being able to have conversation with him and to commune with him, privately to be able to just have that time with Abba Father all by myself, there's no way that I can repay that. There's no way that nobody can pay for that. No money can equate to that. No amount of sleep can equate to that. So we got to get up. We got to move. So I am going to um, wrap us up with this very simple prayer. And it's just simple as this. Dear Lord, I pray that I might hear, listen, and respond when you speak. Amen. A very simple prayer you can open your mouths and you can say that prayer again. Dear Lord, I pray that I might hear, listen and, listen and respond when you speak. Not when I feel like it. Not when I get around to it. Not when it's convenient to me or even not when I'm going through. But I might hear, listen and respond when you speak immediately right now in this moment not later so family for those of us who like to procrastinate for those who are, of us who like to do it when we get ready i am telling you again we need to pray that we will hear him listen and respond when he speaks now it's motivation monday so i'm super excited because i am going to have a amen thank you thank you I am teeing this thing up because we're going to have a beautiful soul on for Wisdom Wednesday. I'm super excited about her. And um, before I even talk about her, because I want y'all to tune in and I want you to get your children on. I know like our children. Yeah, if you're working from home, pull them children up to this face because you're going to want them to hear it. Family, why am I so excited? Because A, I love the Lord. What have I been doing already this morning? Praising and worshiping with my brothers and sisters. Where did I do that at? On the God Zone. Yes, on the God Zone. Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. 
prayer, short testimony, song, scripture. It's an opportunity for us to just be us and fellowship and worship. I see the co-founders, both um, Rutho and Dr. O, Avro, Ocilian, Similian are on. If you would, please drop the information in the chat because I want to share this information with everybody. I want to share that ministry with everyone. Um, my physical therapist texted me this morning. I no longer need it, praise God. But she said, today was my first day on the God Zone and it was amazing. So family, I want to make sure we keep spreading the word and it's getting bigger and bigger. This week though, I hope you see my post. We got power couples on. Yes, we got power couples on. We started today with the Barclays. So this week is going to be nothing short of amazing. So I want you to set your alarm, go ahead and get up, do what you have to do. For those of y'all with T-Mobile and it says this is gonna cost you one cent a minute, one cent a minute, that's 60 cent boo for, for 60 minutes, pay the money. I promise you, you will not regret it. I don't even think about it. Whatever it is, whatever it costs me, I'm gonna be on there. So just do what you gotta do. Get on the God Zone and be plugged in. With that being said, on Wednesday, I have a beautiful soul who is coming on and I'm going to drop her picture in a little bit. I'm going to um, show the information shortly, but this young lady is a senior in high school, a senior in high school, and she is doing big things. She is doing big things and she is getting ready to graduate. And you know, so many of us, our, our children graduate and they're like, okay, we're going to college. Well, not my little sister. She about to do something a little different. She's going to college but she is about to be serving the Lord. She's going to take a gap year. And that's all I'm going to say about that because she's going to come on and we are going to bless her as our, our Freedom by Design family. We're going to bless that sister when she comes on because she has a powerful testimony and um, I love her um, so much. I love her parents. So I'm excited. Y'all are about to see it in a little bit. It is going to be amazing. So please make sure you get ready for Wisdom Wednesday, tell your children, tell everybody, hey, we need to plug in because this thing is about to be epic. So we're going to be able to be a blessing and it's going to work out in God's faith with God's favor for sure. So I love each and every one of you guys. I look forward to seeing you on Wisdom Wednesday at 730. Guys, I love you. God bless you. And remember our prayer. We want to hear, listen and respond when he speaks to us. Amen. So God bless you guys. Have a fantastic day. I love you and I will see you on Wednesday morning. Bye-bye.